What's up, guys, and welcome to the Upper Room Podcast. Um, I'm joined here with Hoyt. Come hey. on. Yep, and so this is where we get the opportunity to answer some questions that you guys have submitted. And um, it, it, this is an awesome opportunity for you to share um, this video or this podcast with a friend or a family member um, as we dive into today's question, which is this right here. What has to happen before the rapture. Okay, yeah. so this is a big old rabbit hole that we could jump in and dive in for days and days and days. Right. Um, but today we are going to take this time and answer it to the best of our ability and what we believe and what we believe God's word says. And so, what has to happen before the rapture? Hoyt, won't you kick us off? Yep. So, first of all, uh, one thing that I think we ought to say every time is do not take our word for this stuff. That's right. Look in your own Bible. <laughs> read God's word. His word is going to outweigh our word every time. Certainly. Um, so yes, always, always go to the Bible as your source rather than a podcast. Any podcast. <laughs> All right, so uh, now I don't want to take for granted also that you just know what the rapture is. Uh, so we're going to explain that a little bit and also just some general eschatology because why not? We're already on the subject. That's cool. That's a cool $5, five word right there. Yeah, it means... The study of the end times. That's right. So you could just say the study of the end times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get into it. The book of Revelation is a book on end time prophecy. It's just the things to come. Uh, and there are a bunch of different interpretations of, well, how you can interpret Revelation. Um, always you let scripture interpret scripture, of course. But here's just an interpretation that we have. Uh and we are in uh, currently the church age. So in the beginning of Revelation, in the first three chapters, I believe, you have a bunch of different letters to uh, these different churches. And each church, you can like map it out on a timeline, how each one is a different section of the church age. And um, we are currently in this church age where we are trying to get the gospel out to uh, the ends of the world, to all nations, all tribes and tongues. Uh, and as you move along from there, you eventually get into the rapture. And that's what we're about to get into right now. So it is connected to a, a phrase, caught up. And we get that from 1 Thessalonians 4, 16 and 17, if you yeah, want to read that. Alex. Certainly, because the word rapture is not in, in Scripture. Mm -hmm. um, but this is where we, we connect this dot is in right. the 1 Thessalonians um, for the Lord Himself is is the, for the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then he who are, and then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will always be with the Lord. And so um, the word rapture is connected to the phrase caught up that's that's where yep. we we connect that dot that's where we make the connection right there yep. in first thessalonians yep and it says the dead in christ will rise first and then those who are alive and that's just something that i found interesting that you have like uh an order to it first god brings the dead back that's right and then the living yeah. and i think that'd be an interesting thing to see <laughs> just like <laughs> yeah you're sure. there you're a living person and then you see the dead rise no, no. <laughs> like, this would be wild. Yeah. That would be very scary. I mean, imagine. I, I mean, literally imagine this. Uh, if, if today the rapture happened, yeah. holy moly, that would mm. be wild. That'd I be heard. Crazy. I heard uh, this one guy. He wanted to be a uh, uh, what do you call it? A grave tender. I don't know. You like cut the grass around the graves yeah, and yeah, yeah. you, you it, make sure the flowers are good. Whatever. Uh, but yeah, maintenance. Maintenance the gravesite. That would be a really cool job to have. <laughs> Until the rapture. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that would be crazy, man. It would be wild. Uh, but so before that happens, uh, the whole world needs to hear, and there's another scripture that kind of proves that right here, Second Peter 3, 9, if you want to read that as well. Yeah, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. And so we, we see that, we read the scripture and we see that 
is God's heart for every single person to come to repentance. Yeah. Um, and, and how are they supposed to come to repentance? Well, through hearing God's word, mm-hmm. right? And, and through us, and through the Great Commission of going and telling everyone about the gospel, everyone about Jesus. Yeah. Um, and so how can how can the end time come? Again, he, he says he's, he's being patient yeah. that all should hear yeah. so that none, he desires for none to perish. Mm-hmm. So there's a objection that you might hear this like, Jesus has been promising that he'll return soon for 2,000 years. Like yeah. We've been hearing this for 2,000 years, and still it has not happened. Why has it not happened yet? And this verse is the reason right there. It's not that he's slow. It's not that it's fake. It's that he's patient. That's right. Toward us. Mm-hmm. And um, it's not even, reading the scripture, it comes to, to thought that it's not even slow to God. Mm-hmm. Like it's not happening slow. Yeah. You know? But, but rather, again, he is being patient, but we would consider it slow because we're inside time or we're stuck in this this, this thing called time and yeah. God is well outside of that. Yeah. And so he's not slow in the sense that we would consider what slow is, but rather he's patient yeah. with us. Uh, so once we are caught up in the air with Christ, kind of moving on so, past so, the rapture so, here. Yeah, so just to make sure, to kind of answer the question and then we're going to kind of move on to yeah. answer the question of what has to happen before the rapture to answer the question it is for everyone to hear about the name of jesus yes yeah for the gospel to be spread to the ends of the earth that has to happen before jesus and you know at the end of the day jesus could technically do whatever he wants to do okay you know but but if we're we're looking at scripture we see that Mm -hmm. that god desires for everyone to hear about the name of jesus and we know that 42% of the world has yet to know about the name of Jesus. So yeah. we have a long ways to go. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a lot of work to do before um, the, the return uh, of Jesus. And again, in, in no way am I saying that I know when Jesus is coming. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, whenever we're at 1%, oh my God, we only have one more, one percent of people <laughs> to hear about the name of Jesus. He's coming back as soon as we fulfill this. Because again, at the end of the day, I, I, I have no idea. Mm-hmm. I just, as reading scripture, this has to at least happen first. That everyone mm-hmm. hears about the name of Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. So, Jesus even said himself, "Nobody knows the day nor or the hour." He right. said, "No one but the Father knows." Yeah, actually. Like, yeah, and, and um, so, um, so, so that answers the question. There is is simply everyone needs to hear about the right. name of Jesus. And so now we're going to take a time since we're here, since we're talking about the end times, we're going to talk about what it looks like, not just to stop at the rapture. Yep. Um, but to continue to to walk through the end times for anybody that's listening, um, you know, this is what we believe. This is what we believe God's word um, says and states. And we have a ton of scripture to walk through this. We're not going to read it all, um, but we will give you the references uh, of where they are at in in scripture as well. So once you continue um, yeah. to to talk to talk about this. Now moving on, <laughs> once yeah. we are caught up in the air with Christ. After that. Uh, we have this marriage supper of the Lamb and the judgment seat of Christ. So if you make it to this point, you're going to heaven. You ain't got nothing to worry about. Like, you're, you're there. You're good. Uh, this is just where you face the judgment of Christ, which is found in Romans 14.10, 2 Corinthians 5.10. This is where you exercise your personal Bible reading. Yes, go and right read here. these scriptures. Yeah, <laughs> we're giving you them for you to go read them. Um. Uh, and you will be rewarded for the things that you did on this earth and purified of the evil things as well. So it's something that you kind of see two sides of in Scripture. So you know that there's grace and you know that there's uh, that it's by faith um, and not by works. But you also know from these Scriptures that you're going to be dealt with according to your deeds That's as well. Right. Um, it's not necessarily a salvation issue, mm-hmm. but it's a... a I don't know what you would say. Uh, I don't know. It's a rewarding issue. Yeah. Well, and the thing... <laughs> How is, many crowns you going to get? <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And the thing about this, whenever you're in this moment, you're getting judged for the good things and the bad things. Yeah. Right? And so, like, again, you're going to heaven, but mm-hmm. you still have to be judged for yeah. what you did on earth. God is not just a God of love. He's a God of justice. Yeah, that's right. But the thing about this is that you're at the judgment seat of Christ, which yeah. is the grace, yeah. which is the blood mm-hmm. um, that, that covers your life. And so that's the only way that you're able to get through. And then you say, well, you know, what about the crowns that I received? Well, this is what you're going to do with those crowns. You're going to take those crowns off your head and you're going <laughs> to lay them, them at down. the feet of Jesus. You're going <laughs> to cast them 
at the feet of Jesus, and and that's where it talk that's where it talks about in Scripture as well, and those references that we gave you. Um, you're not going to keep those crowns, <laughs> right? You're going to cast them at the feet of Jesus because you were the one that should have died. You were the one yes. that um, was in need of the grace, and Jesus was the was the perfect, uh, the, yeah. the perfect Lamb that He received. He mm-hmm. should be the one receiving the rewards, and so that's what you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You're going to get them and then throw them back to His feet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then your worship. <laughs> yeah, the song that we sing in heaven is that He alone is worthy. That's right. That's He He alone. That's right. Um, where are we at? Second Corinthians five ten. Here's another scripture. We want to read that. Um, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each one uh, may receive what is due for what he has done in the body, whether good or evil. Yep. Yep. So that's where you're judged for mm-hmm. good and evil in your right. life. So while this is happening in heaven, there will be complete and utter chaos on earth for seven years. Yes. If you go into that, oh my goodness, yeah, it's, and, it's and not he, a fun time. No, and, and you, could, <laughs> you could sit here and debate all day talking about the, the, the great tribulation that mm-hmm. happens for seven years. Uh, is it actually seven years? What actually yeah. happens during this time? Are Christians going to be able to walk through, you know, like all these things you're, you're talking about? But I believe, again, that we will be caught up with Christ, the Christians, followers of Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will not have to walk through this time. Um, and so during this time on earth, it will be almost impossible for you to give your heart to Jesus. Yeah. Um, it, 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 you, it will be in the sense of if you give your heart to Jesus, you will be martyred. You will be killed. Yeah. Um, you know, so so that is very. It's going to be very very difficult for a mm-hmm. Christian to give their heart to Jesus because yeah. of this right here. The deception. We may feel like we have deception on Earth right now, but whenever you're in that time, it will be a deception times a hundred. Oh yeah. It's going to be to the point to where you're going to love the Antichrist mm-hmm. because he is so deceptive. You're not even going to understand that this is the Antichrist. Yeah. Like, the Antichrist legal name will not be first name, anti, last name, Christ. Yeah, it, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. You're not going to know that this is the guy that's, that, that is, that is uh, going to bring destruction. You know, like, yeah. y- you just don't understand. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, we, we're reading about it now. We're thinking about it now. We're like, yeah, we're definitely going to know that it's the Antichrist. You're not going to know. No. 100% deceived, um, and, and so it's going to be very, very, very difficult, um, and you certainly do not want to find yourself walking through the seven years of tribulation. Right. Um, People will be convinced that the Antichrist is the Christ. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, he, he's going to be doing, it's going to talk, it, there's going to be miracles that happen. Mm-hmm. Like, there's going to be things that he's doing that you're like in awe of, mm-hmm. but it's deception. And the where that's, a lot of that's going to come from you think about all these other religions, uh, Judaism, uh, Mohammedism, or Islam, uh, they are all still waiting on their Christ. Mm-hmm. All yeah. these other religions are still waiting on their Christ. That's this right. Antichrist is going to fulfill that role for them. Uh, yeah, certainly. That's where the yeah, deception is going to be. And really everybody's going to buy into this guy. Oh, yeah. Um, and so this will happen after the rapture, after the, the caught up, in, in, or after the caught up. Um, all, uh, of the Christians, of the followers of Jesus, and then um, you'll have the the uh, seven years of tribulation. Mm-hmm. So after this happens, after the seven years is over with, after this time is done, um, you will then have the physical return of Christ. Is what is what we call it. But I, I want to clarify with you for for just a moment. Um, whenever we say the second coming of Christ, whenever I, I hear, whenever I first heard this, I'm like. Okay, so then there was the first coming. Jesus was here, right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then whenever we were raptured, that was the second coming, right? And then, what about whenever Jesus came after the tribulation? Yeah, third coming. That was the third, third <laughs> one. And I was thinking about it, in, 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 in not in the right sense of what it means whenever you say the second coming of Christ. And so, whenever mm-hmm. I say that. Um, whenever you say that, whenever you hear that, it is a series of events, okay? It is that Jesus is coming, right? Mm -hmm. It it is a time, it is a time period of the second coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. And so um, the second coming of Christ is all these events leading up to the physical return of Christ. So then you have currently, right now, the church age, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have the rapture, and then you have... The, that that time, the seven year tribulation, right, and then you have the physical return of Christ. Yeah, and so all of this, the 
all these events connected together is the second coming of Christ. Okay, yeah. that's how um, that's what we believe. That's what we kind of kind of stand on right here is that that's the second coming of Christ. It's not that he came for the rapture and then he came again for the physical return. It's that all of this together is the second coming of Christ. Just to clarify, um, to kind of help you understand. Mm -hmm. And and so the physical return of Jesus is found in Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Again, I'm not going to read all of this, um, but Jesus comes on a white horse, uh, an incredible return as Jesus is coming down from heaven. Um, Mm -hmm. And then it leads us into... Um, the Battle of Armageddon. Okay? Yeah. And so after the physical return of Jesus, they have the Battle of Armageddon on yeah. Earth. And this is, at that point, it's not really a battle. <laughs> you know, like, like, it's, it's a not, one-sided annihilation. Yeah, it's a one-sided <laughs> annihilation. It's not like we're actually fighting. Uh, Jesus wins. Like, yeah. There's a little bit of confusion with Armageddon. And Armageddon is actually now associated with the end times. And mm-hmm. it's like it's not a time period or anything. It refers to a place. It refers to the Valley of Megiddo. And if you actually look it up today, it's in the middle of a park. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> yeah, you can go there. Yeah. You can go and have a little picnic where the end of the world is going to take place. <laughs> yeah, so there you go. You can go and check it out for yourself. Uh, but this is going to be a one-sided battle. Jesus is not. This is not going to be a hard fight for Jesus. It will simply be Jesus speaks it, mm-hmm. and it happens, and it's over with, and it's done. Um, So at that point, the devil um, will be thrown into the bottomless pit, and the Antichrist Mm -hmm. and the beast that rose up in the Great Tribulation will be thrown into the lake of fire, okay? Um, So now the devil has not been destroyed, okay? Not killed. He's still still, um, alive, but he has been thrown into the bottomless pit, and the beast and uh, and, um, the the Antichrist are now thrown into the lake of fire, okay? Mm Mm-hmm. They're still yet to be fully dealt with. Right. Let's say it like that. Let's say it like that. Um, then Jesus rules and reigns for a thousand years on the earth. So this is a really cool time. Like, and there's mm-hmm. a lot that you could talk about during the thousand year reign. Like, so so many interesting things and and questions and um, like, there's just so much that you yeah. could talk about in a thousand year reign. Like, can you, is there still gonna be? Yeah. Are we still gonna be having kids? Like, mm-hmm. how does this work? Are we gonna be with our families? Like, yeah. this oh. is the time when you can go up to Jesus and ask him, "Why did you create mosquitoes?" Yeah, like you're That's literally gonna be able to physically go to Jerusalem and go to Jesus sitting on the throne. Mm-hmm. Like, holy smokes, this is gonna be a very awesome time. So, as Christians. As followers of Jesus, we will rule and reign with Christ in this time. So, uh, this is for a thousand years, and those who somehow manage to endure the tribulation and the battle of Armageddon will still be walking this earth in their physical bodies. Imagine that. So, yeah. the seven years of tribulation, they got saved, okay? They, 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 they know Jesus. They didn't die in the this, this seven years of tribulation. They walked through the battle of Armageddon, okay? Because mm-hmm. I don't know what technically how it happens but jesus wins obviously victory instantly yep. and they're still alive imagine being alive all through this time yeah <laughs> whole you just endure to the end right there yeah. imagine getting saved during the seven year tribulation <laughs> yeah i mean seriously <laughs> Um, and so you still will have people that will that will still be alive with flesh and blood on their hands and, and, and bodies, mm-hmm. um, and walking in their physical bodies on this earth during that time. And then here here's here's a really key thing right here. So you say, well, then they'll, they'll, they're going to eventually die, right? Mm-hmm. They're not. So right. they will have access to the tree of life because yeah. there will be no death during the thousand years. Tree of Life is a throwback, dude. It takes you back to the garden. <laughs> All the man. way to the Genesis, you know? like, <laughs> And so they will be able to eat from the Tree of Life, mm-hmm. and they're not going to die. They're not mm-hmm. going to age. They're, they will be able to sustain their bodies to, to sustain their lives. Um, while, at the same time, we will have glorified bodies like Christ. Mm-hmm. Us, followers of Jesus that were with Christ um, in heaven, or at the marriage supper of the Lamb, we will have our glorified bodies. Mm-hmm. With 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 Jesus. What does that mean exactly? Glorified so, body. So you look at the glorified body after Jesus was resurrected from the dead. What mm-hmm. did that look like? He was. Uh, I don't know. He was able to. He was able to do some interesting stuff. Like <laughs> some people say, like he was able to walk through walls because, like, he was he was he just appeared in a room. That's right. He just appeared places. Yeah. And so we will have a glorified body like Jesus. 
And so, nice. so he, we get to teleport. Yeah, I mean, he had the, <laughs> you know he had the scars on his hands. He had the physical touch because Thomas touched Jesus, mm-hmm. right? So you you still would have the touch feeling. Yeah. But at the same time, he was able to just be in a room. Mm-hmm. The door was locked. N- nobody opened the door for Jesus. He was just in the room. Um, and so there was his, his body was not deteriorating. It wasn't made of flesh and blood necessarily, mm-hmm. but he was. Uh, it was at what his glorified body would have been, right? Yeah. And which is the same body that we see whenever he comes down from heaven. It, it talks about his body, yeah, and and and, and what it looks like. Yeah. And so white we hair would, like wool. <laughs> and so we would have our glorified bodies as well. So I I'm not, I'm not saying this is what is going to happen or how it's going to be like, but if it's anything like Jesus after he got up out the grave and walked this earth, dude, we're going to be able to teleport. Mm. We'll be like night crawling. Yeah, come on, we're just gonna appear <laughs> in rooms. We're just gonna like show up in this room, right? And so we're like on the other side of the the, the world, you know, mm-hmm. doing whatever Jesus needs us to do because we're working for Him, we're serving Him. Yeah. And then I'm like, like angels. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know. And so then I, I I I'm just on the other side. Of, I'm in Sam in the United States, and I'm like talking to mm-hmm. somebody of this of the earth that's flesh and blood still. Mm-hmm. They can't, they can't like just disappear and show up places. They're like walking this earth. And then I'm like, hey, hang on, hang on. I got to go talk to Jesus in Jerusalem real quick. <laughs> I just go to Jerusalem and I come back. No, look, I'm not saying this is, like, I don't know how scripture support, like how <laughs> insane supportive this is, but I think it would be really cool. Like, I mean, yeah. this, is, this is really neat of what it could be like. Um, in a thousand year reign. I don't know about you. I like to think about stuff like that. I, I'm like, man, this would be really, really awesome. Yeah. Um, but anyway, you can take your 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 creative side of your brain and 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 run with it on, on that sense. But be so I say funny, all that. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine you're just one of the people that is normal person. Yeah, and you're just like, what in the heck? Why can't I do that? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, dang man, I gotta wait a thousand years. <laughs> God. <laughs> You know, uh, so again, I, I'm just having some fun with it, um, and, and so that's what it will be like during the thousand year reign. So after this moment, after this thousand year reign, the devil will be released again and will ri- raise up an, an army to attempt another attack on Christ and the followers of Christ. Um, and so during this time, the people who are flesh and bu- blood will be tempted again and may fall to evil. Okay, so again. Not it's not going to be easy to be a, a follower a follower of Jesus if you right. walk through the tribulation. Right. It's going to be very difficult. Yeah. To continue to stay a follower mm-hmm. of Jesus because then you'll be tempted again. All right. Mm-hmm. That temptation that we all struggle with right now mm-hmm. will become will come back for them. Yeah. They will be able to be tempted again um, because the the devil will be released. Now those who are in Christ already will not be able to be tempted again. Mm-hmm. Okay, and so you will be with Christ. Um, the enemy will build his army and make his way to Jerusalem. And at that point, we find ourselves in Revelation twenty-seven through ten, uh, which basically uh, ends up being being no match again. <laughs> like Jesus just says, mm-hmm. "It's over. Yeah, we're done. We're not. We're not. This is over with. Done." Now, we're putting a period at the end of it now, mm-hmm. okay? Jesus puts a period on it right here, um, and, and I'll read uh, verse number 10. And the devil who had deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and sulfur where the beast and the false prophet were, okay? So they were destroyed at the Battle of Armageddon, right? right. The, the, the false prophet, the Antichrist, and the beast, they were thrown into the lake of fire. Mm-hmm. And now the devil and all of those with him um, will be thrown in that lake as well. Yeah. Um, and so then we find ourselves at the great white throne judgment. All right? So we were at the judgment seat of Christ. Now we are at the great white throne judgment. Mm-hmm. Um, you do not want to be at the great white throne judgment. Yeah. Okay? You are not safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this is Revelation 20, 11. I'll read it since it's just one verse. Then I saw a great white throne and him who was seated on it from his presence, presence, earth and sky fled away and in, in no place. Um, so here the devil and all who had been in Sheol, so talking about um, all of the uh, people that had passed away mm-hmm. um, during our time now and, and, and any other time 
Um, they are mm-hmm. in in hell currently, which is a waiting place. It's not mm-hmm. it's not the final judgment. Right. Not the final death. No, that's right. It's not the final death. Mm-hmm. Um, so they are in what is called Sheol, mm-hmm. Hades, or um, um, again hell. Mm-hmm. And so in death itself, so all of those who have been with him in Sheol, uh, and even death itself, were thrown into the lake of fire. Yeah, the final enemy, death. Yeah, the final enemy. That's such is, a cool thing, man. Yeah. Like you think about that, I think of like. I, I can't help but think about it in like terms of like the Chronicles of Narnia, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about this as like characters in a storybook, mm-hmm. you know, like well, I mean, you, have, you read through Revelation, some of the yeah, characters yeah, do yeah. look like that. Yeah, but death, you know, you finally get to death, which I don't know. It's just what happens at the end of life, and then finally you take death. God takes death as into it, His as, hand as if it's a character. Yeah, as if it's a person. And throws them into the lake of fire, into the final death. Yeah, uh, that's that, whoa. <laughs> he threw death into death. Yeah, you know, like it's what it a, final. <laughs> what a paradox. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's insane. Um, <clears throat> and so, all, and all of the people whose names were not written in the Lamb's book of life. So you yeah. have the enemies, which are which are the Antichrist, the Beast, mm-hmm. the Devil, and then death itself thrown into yep. the lake of fire. And then those who were not written into the Lamb's book of life, they're standing before God. Yeah. And at that point, you find yourself... Yeah. You don't want to be those people. Yeah. Uh, you, you find yourself being thrown into the lake of fire as well. Mm-hmm. And this is the final nail in the coffin of Satan and death. Um, and the final victory is established. Yeah. Period. Um, the, and, and then all of this is over with and done. And we find ourselves in Revelation 21, 1 through 4. Go read it for yourselves. It says the new heaven and the new earth. Yep. Right. So now that uh, all of this has been destroyed, God desires to have have li- have or ha- have life and do do life and eternity with us in a peaceful and newly fresh place. Yep. Restart from Eden. Yeah. And, and so you have the final finishing touches, the new heaven, new earth. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, you talk about beauty. You talk about um, this is where eternity happens. Uh, Going through all of these events, you know, as as followers of Jesus, you know, you you think about all of these moments that you're going to walk through and you think about the thousand year reign, you're like, wow, that's going to take forever. (laughs) You know, like, because we think about a thousand years now, like, is is it going to be the same thousand years as we would consider a thousand years now? Mm. Or does it feel sped up? I don't know. You know, like, I don't understand. Or slower. (laughs) Yeah, or slower, you know. Are we we now, like, working from it from, like, a God perspective? Like, it's, we're outside Outside of time? time, Yeah. You know, is a thousand years one day, Mm -hmm. day one thousand, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't completely understand uh, on that. And so, I just think about it like, man, I cannot wait to get to the new heavens and new new earth. Yeah. Because everything will be done. Mm-hmm. It'll be final. It'll be finished. Um, and we will just get to spend eternity with Jesus. Yeah. And and you think about how beautiful it's going to be yeah. and how incredible it's going to be. And, and you wonder of what the life is going to be like, you know, mm-hmm. and, 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 the fellowship with the Jesus. The fellowship, yeah. And, and not with with Jesus and with people and yeah. just the crowd of witnesses yeah. and people that you're going to be with. Like, yeah. you just, what is it going to be like? Mm-hmm. Fully, like, completely. Like, what is it? I don't even think our minds can fathom it, mm-hmm. which the Bible talks about that, how we can't, we're, we, we're not going to fathom it. We're not going to understand it. Um, but my mind sometimes, just like the thousand year rain part, like, man, like, what is this? Gonna, this is going to be so incredible. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you want to find yourself at the new heavens yeah. and the new earth. My um, heart feels soft even thinking about this, man. Like you just really looking forward to this. Like it, there's a song like how I long to breathe the air of heaven. Yeah, you know, and like every time I sing that part, like I, bro, it hits me because <laughs> it's like really like you really think about this. I really, really am looking forward to not just spending eternity in a paradise where there's. Mm-hmm where everything's perfect. Yeah. Not only that, but it's with Jesus mm-hmm. who saved me, who brought me into it. The my one that friend. I can walk up to. Yeah. Yeah. With the Father, you know, with the with the Spirit, with with uh all these people in unity that, that we've witnessed to or that other people have witnessed to or yeah. that witness to others. And like you get 
bro, it's just a huge fellowship here, man, and it's it's yeah. really gonna be amazing. Yeah, and you think about all the people in the, before us that gave their hearts to Jesus, right? Like not just our time period, mm-hmm. but billions of people mm-hmm. that gave their heart to Jesus, that Jesus saved, yeah, that that His grace covered, mm-hmm. you know, and so. Um, this is going to be a beautiful moment, you know, and, yeah. and to see all those all those times, and um, I just can't wait. I can't yeah. wait. So let that, me let me read uh, yeah, this last bit, uh, just from verse three in that uh, verse three and four. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, "Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man; he will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God Himself will be with them as their God." So I'll just stop right there. We, 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 whenever you read that, it's that it's not that it's so crazy how God words this. Mm-hmm. It's not that we're dwelling with Him, but this is how cool of a God we have mm-hmm. that He wants to dwell with you. Yeah, like He chose you mm-hmm. that He would want to spend eternity with you, not that you would want to spend eternity with Him. You know, like, do you just do you see, do you see that? Am I making yeah. sense? Yeah, I that got you. He would want to be with us. Yeah. Not that we would just want to be with him. Mm-hmm. But he said, I'm going to dwell with these guys. I want to, sp- I want to go to them. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so obvious. That's that, so humbling. That, that people would want to be with God. Yeah. Like everybody, sure. Like everybody wants to go to heaven. Nobody that's wants right. to go to hell. Nobody wants to go to hell. But here's the, here's the cool part. God wants to be with you as well. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it's not like he gains anything from that. No, he, yeah. He just literally wants, to, but he wants to be with you. Yeah, and, and it's so pers- It's so cool how personable he is, mm-hmm. because he's not talking about you in the sense of people mm-hmm. or man, but he's yeah. talking to, he's pointing at you. Yeah, individually. Like, yeah, individually. He he calls you by name. He yeah. knows the num- number of hairs on your head, mm-hmm. and so whenever you read God's word, it's not that you read it in a necessarily a holistic way sometimes sometimes mm-hmm. you just mm-hmm. talking about you what yeah. you know like that is like you could read that he wants to dwell with you yeah that's awesome and Continue. This, this last part he will wipe away every tear from their eyes and death shall be no more mm-hmm. neither shall there be mourning nor crying nor pain anymore for the former things have passed away wow. the end that has so much hope, <laughs> so much hope dude <laughs> Wow. Amen. Amen. I say amen to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes so, and amen. That's right. Well, thank you guys. I hope this kind of answers your question of, you know, what happens before the rapture, but also yep. just the just the hope that you have to look for, the, the mm-hmm. blessed hope that uh, in Jesus um, mm-hmm. to come and, and that there's a ton of things to look forward to as a follower of Jesus. Yeah. Um, that we're, we're doing, this is, there's much more than the 80, 90 years that we're living on this earth, 100 years, you know, like, yeah. th- there's so much beyond just that, just that timeline. Yeah. Um, and so put your hope in Jesus. I hope that, that this, is in, this is encouraging to you, lifts you up, um, answers your question as well, um, and also may ask some more questions so that you go and dive into your word and figure out um, what, those, what those answers are. And yeah. um, don't be scared to jump into God's word. Um, and to allow it to change you and change your your heart as well and transform you. So thank you guys so much. Like this, share it, send it to a friend, send it to a family member, um, and we will see you next time. Thank you. Adios. Adios.